Welcome to Perm's Comms and the Binomial Theorem. Yes, Perm's Comms and the Binomial Theorem. What, what is this all about? Well, Perm's and Comms are specifically talking about how many different ways you can do something. Okay? They're looking at variations of something. For example, how many different ways can you get from home to school? Well, notice that you've got like different roads, different sidewalks. You might be able to even cut through a field or something. That's what this is all about. How many different ways can you get to someplace? How many different variations are there? One of the first ones you want to talk about is something called the fundamental counting principle, also known as FCP. Yes, the FCP. Now, if you read the definition for this, it's really quite unique. This refers to the number of ways a task. So you going to school, you going to the mall, uh, how many different outfits can you get out of your closet, and so on and so forth. So, in other words, this task can be made up of several stages, uh -huh. and has a number of choices. Now, what do I mean by this? Think about an outfit, okay? Think about an outfit. Several stages would be, yeah, you need a top, you need, uh, let's say, a shirt, and let's say you need pants. Well, how many choices do you have in your closet for these things? Okay? This works out to be the fundamental counting principles. How many ways can you dress yourself? See what I mean? Okay. So how's this work? Can be re represented by, well, take a look at the first stage. This would be, let's say, pants. Well, how many choices of pants do you have? That's your first the first stage. Your second stage could be something like the top that you wear. Well, how many choices do you have for that? Uh, the third stage could be, oh, I don't know. What kind of socks are you going to wear with that? Well, how many choices do you have? Either way, you're going to take a choice, multiply by another choice, multiply by another choice. This is going to give you the number of possibilities of your outfit. Ha! So let's talk a little bit more here. The FCP is basically a fill-in-the-blanks kind of principle. You figure out one thing, number of choices for one, put in a number. Number of choices for another, put in another. Figure out the number of choices for the third, put it in there. So you arrange these N objects, you write down how many blanks you have. So if you're talking about getting dressed, you want your shirt, you want your pants, you want your socks. That would be three, you put down three stages, okay? You fill in the blank with the number of possible objects. How many different shirts do you have? How many different pants do you have? How many different pairs of socks do you have? And then, of course, maybe there's some restrictions because, of course, those restrictions could be like, oh, I don't know, you don't want to wear red with orange, Okay, so you put a restriction on that and saying, ooh, we got to deal with that first. No red and orange. No orange pants with red shirts. It just looks too weird. See what I mean? Okay, so with that in mind, let's go to this. A lot of FCP can be done using a graphic organizer. The way I do things is look at this flowchart. This is really cool. Here's a wonderful example for you. It says a living room has two different lamps. Each lamp has four settings. Yes, off is a setting. So you got off, low, medium, and high. So you got lamp number one. So there's lamp one. Okay? And you think about it. It has four settings. Then there's lamp two. Okay? And lamp two has also four settings. And you can look at all the possible combinations of these guys. And that's one of the reasons why I got this beautiful graphic organizer all set up here. Look at this. Check this out. Okay? So look, your first lamp could have one of these settings. Off, low, medium. And you can't see it yet because it's down at the bottom here. you got a high setting. Now, think about all the different settings you can have for the second lamp. Well, in the first lamp, you can just keep it off. You can keep it off, okay? So the second lamp, maybe you keep that one off too and you're sitting in the dark, right? Or maybe you just want a nice, oh, it's a nice romantic glow. Yes, you and your special lovely are sharing a beautiful dinner. Oh, yeah, well, whatever, <laughs> okay? So this one could be off, it could be on low. Second one could be on low. This one could be off, it could be on medium. Could be off, could be on high. Right? Same goes for the next one. Oh, take your first lamp and look. Now that you have four more settings for this. Aha! See how where we're going with this? Take the third 
setting on the first lamp. Well, guess what? The other lamp still has four settings. And then finally, you can go, oh, I'm going to just turn this thing off. I'm going to crank it out and burn out my retinas. You bet you it's so bright. Well, the other lamp could be off. It could be low or medium or high. So if you count these, look, you got four for this group. You got four for that group. That's eight. You've got another four here. That's 12. You got another four here. You got a total of 16 possibilities cranking out here. Well, yeah, no kidding. And look how beautifully this is organized. And remember what a tree diagram is. Uh huh. Well, some people want yeah, something else, some other kind of organization here. Well, the other organization you can use is a table here. You could say, okay, there's my first lamp choices. I could be off, low, medium, or high. My second choices could be off, low, medium, or high. If my first choice will be low, okay, then not second one, off, low, medium, and high. Okay, medium, oh, this could be off, low, <laughs> medium, and high. Getting the message yet? Oh, my gotcha. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, and if you count all of these, you still have 16 possibilities. Or you can be smart and use the fundamental counting principle and call this stage number one, okay? Call this stage number two. You have four choices for number one. You have four choices for number two. You multiply them together. You get 16 possibilities all together. So graph arc organizers are really, really quite nice they're time consuming, but they do visually see things really, really nice and put that out there for you. Really quite pretty. Okay. So you can use a, the old trusted tree diagram here. You can maybe build a chart or you could just say, ah, oh, yeah, four possibilities for the first one, four possibilities for the second one. I'm going to multiply them. Either way, I find out that there are 16 possibilities. Stay tuned. Lots more to come. More to come.